Welcome to the What's Happening Birmingham video podcast. Your family traditions, culture, and stories are your legacy. So is your health history. Join the All of Us Research Program and share your health information. Through research, your legacy can help build a healthier future for all of us. Hello, everyone. This is Jarvis S. Scott with What's Happening in Birmingham. Today, I am continuing my series interviewing the key people behind the All of Us Research Program. Today, I have the honor and pleasure of having Dr. Fawad here today. She is the core principal investigator, recruitment, and retention core director. Uh, Dr. Fawad, how are you doing today? Uh, very good. Thank you for having me today. Great, great, great. Um, before we start, I've read your bio, very impressive. You do not know who this lady is. She has been, I would say, one of the pillars of the UAB medical community for years. And I've always admired your work and you've always been a key player. So I want to just say my personal admiration for that. Thank you. Thank you so much. It takes uh, a lot of people to do the work we do and all what we care is making everybody in all our communities healthy and have a good quality of life. Okay, so before we start, like I said, it's a long bio, but if you can give just like a little brief introduction about yourself. Okay, so I'm a professor of medicine. I'm also a senior associate dean of diversity and inclusion, and I direct a university-wide minority health and health equity research center, uh, which really um, main mission is to improve you know, uh, our ways of knowing how to address health disparities, reach health equity, train our uh, new generation of scientists and really have a good community engagement and listen to our communities to know how we really address their concerns regarding their health. So that's what I do. And in other thing, I'm a researcher trying to work with teams to learn more and um, uh, discover better ways to treat and prevent disease. Okay, so with the All of Us um, research program, what is your role specifically when it comes to being the principal investigator, recruitment, and retention core director? So my role, uh, I oversee the team that really um, goes out, explain the the program to the community um, and do all the process of enrolling people in this in the project or the program and also collect the data that we need and making sure that everyone understands why they need to be enrolled and reach our goals that we promised the National Institute of Health that we can um, uh, we can achieve and get the number of people that we need. Yeah, because I saw it was, it was like 1 million people. Yes, but not for us. This is the nationwide. The nationwide yeah. um, The nationwide goal is a million people. And this is really one of the largest, most ambitious uh, initiative that NIH uh, initiated to have a million people to do one program. And we were very, very fortunate that a Birmingham, uh, UEB, and the state of Alabama uh, became a hub of a network in the South, including Mississippi and Louisiana, to be part of reaching the school. Okay, so how is this different from like the prior research programs you've, you have done in the past? So this one is really unique and it's focused on what we call precision medicine, which is um, we want to learn on an individual basis, not as a lot of people together. What really makes people health, you know, sick and what keep people healthy, but on an individual level, like because people have, they live in their own environment, they come from different uh, places, they eat differently, they work differently, so um, we wanted this to be like more uh, personalized. It's just for the person. So you can receive the best um, treatment or the best recommendation to stay healthy. Um, and like people say, it's exactly like your um, eyeglasses. 
You can't mm. wear mine. You know, you ha they have to fit it to your own vision. Like if I give you mine, you're not going to see anything. If I get yours, I'm not going to see anything. So that's how we want it to be personalized. That's what we call precision medicine. So that's unique because, and that's why they needed a million people so they can collect information to, to know how they achieve this goal. And of course, I think going back into you, like what your background is dealing with, like you said, with diversity and then different minorities, I guess precision medicine counts a lot because a lot of people's train of thought is one, one size fit all. That you're right. So my really work in diversity and minority health really fits very well in this because if we keep including only majority people in these programs, then we're not going to be able to translate all this knowledge and findings to everybody. So uh, diversity is having inclusion too. We have to be inclusive. And that's why uh, our role here, especially at UAB and our network, to really involve as many diverse um, people as possible, especially those that they never participated in research before. So when researchers discover how in a personal level they can treat or prevent disease, we wanna make sure that we did not leave behind uh, people like they're even, you know, like never participated or minorities or people with health disparities. So what I do in the other research really fits very well in, in, in my role here with the, all of us. Okay, so, you know, like you said, UAB is one of the university universities chosen for this. Is there like, do you, do, do you all have any specific recruitment and retention goals specifically for UAB? How many people want to so, recruit? So we started with, um, with having like uh, um, over, um, over our funding to get 100,000 as a network of Southern Network. We're readjusting this a little bit, but we are still shooting for getting as many as we can. So far, we uh, enrolled about 34,000 uh, people. Um, and you know that with the pandemic, we had to slow down and not to do much. Uh, but nationwide, they have close to 450,000 people so far. So we are contributing uh, really uh, a, a big portion of that, uh, that goal for the national level. So we're moving ahead and we need to get as many as we can. Okay, now going back to, like you said, the challenges, because like, for example, it's one thing to get somebody to sign up for the program, but another thing is to keep them in the program. And one thing about the All of Us Research Program from me participating in it, or me joining and participating in it currently, is that this is a 10 year project. Yes, and, um, and, and, I, I always say that sometimes it's a challenge to enroll participants, but it's more challenge to keep them engaged. Um, but it is very important because we want to know what's happening to people over time. Um, and some people we link uh, and they give us consent to do that. We link uh, their uh, information that we get with their electronic health records. So when they come and visit the, their doctors, we can see what happened to them. You know, if they got sick, if they got treated, how they responded to certain drugs, you know, like we need to follow that. So it's important to stick with it um, as much as you can. And we hope that th the people would stick with the program and stay with it. Um, uh, the long time as till the study ends. And there are a, a lot, you know, I've been in other programs before that we followed people for even more than 10 years. And it really give us good information um, that we need, like we identified how to screen for lung cancer or colon cancer. So these are very important that if you enroll in a study to stay in it um, uh, until the end. Yeah, one thing I noticed too, I tell anybody since I've joined the program, I got a free Fitbit from Yes. <laughs> so yes, if you join the program, you can get a, a, a free Fitbit. And the good thing is this 
Fitbit can we can you can measure all your vitals and also your activities and uh, can link to um, some medical information. Um, as you know, too, uh, for people that they get DNA, they get uh, results, their, their uh, you know, ancestry, their genetic results. So there are a lot of benefit also for people that they participate, like it's immediate benefit. Yeah, and one thing I also like about the program is give you, you know, based on, like you said, they're following you around. They also, I, I feel like it gives you like more of a deeper dive. And it goes deeper than just, you know, going like your annual, annual visit, just getting just, I wouldn't call it regular lab work, but they're able to kind of peel the, the orange peels, I guess you can call it. You're right. You're right about that. You know, like they, um, you know, we, we sometimes we say that if you have any, uh, um, you know, like genetic trade or changes, People say, why would I want to know? Because there is nothing they can do about. But um, the discovery and science have really improved that there is a lot of these uh, genes variants that we can do something about it. So as those are come in, people will be counseled if there is something that is found that there are something that they could do about it. Um, so that's important, you know, um, so it's it's not that um, there is no hope and I don't want to know. Um, so, yes, the, the the program can give you back and give genetic counseling if there is needed to. Well, one thing, too, is like I want to ask, I know you probably answered this question already. How important is the diversity to this to the all of us uh, research program, I mean, especially even for medical research? Yeah. So I, I can tell you that. Um, especially with health disparities, like with the improvement technology and how we identify new treatment, new prevention modalities, and now especially with personalized and precision medicine, uh, we really need to look at every individual as the individual. Uh -huh. So imagine that if we have a whole group of people that they don't want to participate and they have doubts about uh, medical research, then, you know, like they're going to be left out when mm -hmm. we know that we, when we get the discovery, you know, like how then if, mm -hmm. if, if you or me, and we don't want to be part of this, don't want to participate, then when we, when we go for treatment or we need to be prevention, we're not included. Um, like I had one of my uh, team member from the community that used to work with me a long time ago and help with the message that we all have to participate on those new discoveries. She says, because when they write the medical books, we have to be in it. Yes. But if you're not in it, you're not in it, you know, so, yeah. so everybody has to be included. And also, if we're not, this is going to increase the gap of health disparities, because then the ones that they always be part of research are always we know about. The ones that they're not will never know about. So health disparity is going to widen and we can't have health equity. So we want to take part. You know, we want everybody to take part. Everybody that's live in rural communities, live in low income neighborhoods, coming from different ethnic backgrounds, coming from different race. Is it old? Is it young? Is a woman? Is a man? You know, we this this really initiative, and that's why we call it all of us. Mm -hmm. It needs everybody. It's all of us to be part of the study. So now that we're five years into the program, where do you see the next five years with this with this program? So Go we're on. hoping that the next five years we're gonna continue to reach our goals for the um. For the million, for sure, that is going to be very important for us. Um, we're hoping that the data that we and the information that we're collecting will speed up our medical research. More people are going to look at this data and find uh, more information and um, will drive really the medical research to be um, to be um, to be to get people to be more healthier. So, um, so we are hoping that the next five years, people are gonna start to, to use the data that we are 
now collecting to really find more findings and speed up uh, the discovery. Okay, and before I end, um, I guess I always like to end an interview with like a fun fact okay. or just a fun thing about yourself. What got you into the, to, to medicine? What got me to medicine? Yeah, you chose as a uh, career. Yeah, when I was a teenager, I used to uh, watch um, um, an American uh, TV series <laughs> okay. uh, about medical doctors. And I was back in Egypt and I said, oh, you know, this looks like fun and those people can really do miracles. I want to be one of them. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's interesting. <laughs> to be one of them. Well, Dr. Fulat, thank you for coming on. Um, thank you, Jarvis. Thank you. And it's great to, ha to have, you know, to give me the opportunity to talk about all of us. Yes, yes. And I tell anybody, this is a great research study. If you want to find out more information about yourself or about your family history, about just certain things that you're just allergic to, this is a, this is a great study. And you know, like in the prior videos, they are very um, protective of your personal data and, and DNA, and, and they won't share it. It's not like one of these 23 and me in public databases. This no. is strictly confidential, almost like your medical records. You're right. And they can give you some ancestry information without sharing your data like the public programs. And also can give you information to improve your health. So, uh, and I want to thank you, Jarvis, for being part of all of us and for promoting this because it's it's important. It's an important initiative. Oh yeah, I, you, know, I, you all you know chose me, but I'm definitely looking forward and looking forward to more interviews and definitely come on in the future because, as I mentioned earlier, Dr. Fawad, she is definitely part of a lot of different other studies around um, the university as well. We'll be so, glad. You just ask and I'll 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 do it. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you all for watching this video. Please check out what's happeningprogram.com for more interviews. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. And I have an audio version of this on Apple Podcasts. Thank you all again and have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you for watching the What's Happening Birmingham video podcast. Please check out our website app or subscribe to our YouTube channel for the latest videos today.